Is it a herd of wildebeest? No, it's just Emma's eyebrows. <laughs> Hi guys, it's Emma. Um Today I am back with another creature feature. The series where I tell you a little bit more about an animal which you may or may not have heard about. I'm guessing today that a lot of you will have heard of this creature because they're really commonly kept in the reptile pet world. So, I'm gonna be introducing you today to crested geckos. If you haven't already, I'd like to invite you to please subscribe down below, join the creature crew, and then become part of our animal and pet loving community. But where is my crested gecko? Here he is! This is an adult male from my work and his name is Sprout. Sprout can be a bit of a jumper, so he might go leaping off into the abyss a couple of times, but don't worry, I'll make sure that I catch him if he does that. He's so cute! <laughs> crested geckos come from New Caledonia. Crested geckos are called crested geckos because they have these little crests on top of their heads, down their backs, and over their eyes. Look above his eye. He's got these amazing crests above his eye, and they go right down his back as well, all the way down to his tail. They do fade once they get to his tail. Now those crests are very soft. They're not there for any kind of protection from predators. They are purely decorative as far as I can tell. So soft, look how soft. In the wild, crested geckos come from New Caledonia, but they were actually thought to be completely extinct up until a couple of years ago. They were only rediscovered in 1994. They were found living on Pine Isle, but since then they've actually been found on Grand Terre. Crested geckos are primarily nocturnal, meaning that they wake up at nighttime and they've got amazing nighttime vision. At the moment, his eyes are still little slits because it's not nighttime just yet, but at night, their eyes become almost completely like big black beads and they can see really, really well at night. They need to have really great vision because at night time they need to catch their food. Crested geckos are omnivorous, so that means they eat a whole variety of foods, but in the wild most often they would eat mushy fruit that they find on the floor as well as little invertebrates. In captivity they're mostly fed a meal replacement diet. It's a bit like a smoothie that you have after going to the gym, it's in a powder form. The two most popular brands are Apache and Pangea. Here's Sprout! <laughs> <laughs> Who is going to blink first? You or the gecko? Well, we'll be here a really long time because actually the crested gecko can't blink. They don't have any eyelids. They actually have a scale which covers their eye that's called the brill. Some geckos can close their eyes and have eyelids just like us for blinking. The crested gecko is not one of them. The crested gecko has no eyelids whatsoever. So in order to keep their eyes moist and their lens clean, they actually have to lick their eyeballs. Sometimes if you're misting the enclosure of a crested gecko at nighttime, you you'll be able to see that they actually lick the water off of their eye lens because they need to be able to maintain some good vision and also it's a way for them to drink as well. So they actually can lick their own eyeballs too. Crested geckos come in a whole variety of colors. Sometimes they're quite light, sometimes they're really dark, and sometimes they have splodges or spots as well. These two over here are two of my more colorful crested geckos. They have the ability to fire up and fire down. So when you see a crested gecko, sometimes they've got these really vibrant colors, but other times they look almost completely pale or washed out. That's because they are fired down, and that's usually when they're sleeping, or lethargic, sometimes it can be an indication of illness or also a lack of humidity, but when they're more awake, they actually fire up. So both of these geckos here are what we call fired up. They're showing their true colors right now. Crested geckos live for around 15 to 20 years. It's amazing to think that although they were thought to be extinct up until 1994, captive breeding efforts have proven so successful that they are now one of the top geckos kept by hobbyists. They're also so popular because they tend to be very docile and very, very relaxed. It's very tough to get a crested gecko to bite. There are exceptions, of course, but typically they're a very relaxed, docile, laid-back species. Now check out this tail here. Do you see the way that that tail wraps around my finger? That's because they have what's known as a semi-prehensile tail. A prehensile tail is a tail which can be used kind of like a fifth limb. It can wrap around things. A lot of monkeys have prehensile tails but crested geckos have a semi-prehensile tail. It's not as strong as a prehensile tail that is fully prehensile, but it is 
a semi prehensile tail. It basically helps them with their balance and also a lot of keepers will be able to back me up on this but sometimes babies when they're learning how to jump they'll hold on to something with their tails and try and jump. Uh, that can be quite funny to see and it's, it's very very comical. Splat over here is an adult male. He's fully fully grown. However I do have some babies at home which I will show you for a size comparison. So this is an adult male and over here is my juvenile called Bonoffi. I have three juveniles at home and this is probably the largest of my juveniles. Look at that. Seriously, look at that size difference. That size difference is ridiculous. You'll also notice that their patterns are very, very different. That's in part why they're so popular as pets. People like to breed them to try and come up with new morphs, they're called. So different colorations. I'm personally a fan of crested geckos, whatever their color. So Sprout over here is kind of a sort of murky green with Dalmatian spots. And over here, Bonoffi is a, you know, I guess a, a bit prettier to some people. He's got some reds and oranges. Really very, very cute. This one over here is Splash. Splat. This one over here is Sprout and Splat is the spitting image of my necklace. Look at that. You're the spitting image of that necklace. Look Splat, it's you. Crested geckos have the remarkable ability to stick to almost anything. I'm going to demonstrate now how well they can stick to just plain glass. So I'll open this up over here. Oh, maybe if I unlock it that will be helpful and yeah that that should work here sprout let's let's get you walking up there let's show everybody how well you can climb there we go do you see pretty much effortless and the reason why they can stick like this is because they have microscopic hairs on their toes they're not strictly hairs in the traditional sense they're actually called setae and those setae allow them to stick to very very flat surfaces almost like Velcro. But hang on a second, if they were able to stick so well, then they wouldn't be able to get away from predators. Well, these geckos can actually move surprisingly fast on a smooth surface, whether they're going vertically, to the side, down, they can move very, very quickly indeed. In fact, where I grew up in Hong Kong, we used to get these geckos running in and out of our air conditioning units lightning fast. So the reason why they can stick to something and not end up stuck there like super glue is because they actually have a fat on those hairs and that enables them to remove that stick and to get away as quickly as possible. However, if a predator were to catch Sprout over here, he can do something amazing. He could actually drop his tail. And once they've dropped their tail, they actually look like a frog butt. In fact, I think that's what people in the reptile community call crested geckos who've lost their tails. They call them frog butts. I actually have a frog butt gecko over in New Jersey and his name is Ziggy and he has a dodgy eye and a frog butt, but I love him. I'll put a picture of Ziggy up here somewhere and you're gonna laugh when you see him because he just has a very special eye from head trauma. I saw him and I fell in love with him. I was like, you little frog butt with your special eye, I need you. <laughs> That process of dropping a tail and sometimes growing it back in other species, though not in the crested gecko species because they can't regrow their tails, it's called autotomy. And basically that means that they can willingly drop their tails are you trying to punch my face? That's not very nice. They can willingly drop their tails and enable themselves to get away. So if a bird or a larger predator came along, grabbed hold of that tail and wouldn't let go, then they'd be able to shed their tail and make a quick getaway. Now that ability to stick has also been investigated by scientists. Scientists actually study the crested gecko and their sticking ability to study the van der Waals force. And they use this to try and come up with new ways of creating materials that can stick to other objects. So they're very, very useful in science too, aren't you? Yes. Now here's a fun game, let's play. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you learned something new. Remember to please hit that subscribe button down below to, ow, I keep hitting my elbow. Remember to hit that subscribe button down below to become part of the Creature Crew and also remember to turn on the notification bell as well because for some reason YouTube does this thing where I'll upload a video and then nobody sees it so make sure you hit that notification bell so you can be part of the early squad and see the videos first. Thanks so much for watching guys, I will see you in another Creature Feature soon. Take care guys, bye!